Hey, what's up everyone and Paladins fans? My name is Blue and we're here with another video. And this one is kind of a new video for the Console Pro News channel, but at the same time, it's something you have seen before on my channel, before Console Pro News' channel popped up onto YouTube. We will be going over the power rankings and we will be trying, I will try my best to put out a power rankings video every week. It is a lot of resources that need to go into it and it's a lot of work, but I will try to grind it out for you. We'll also have power rankings for the Paladins Minor League. Uh, that will be a different video. Paladins Premier League, uh, it's a little different because, you know, for the minor league and the console league, all the teams in the leagues, they play each and every week. And for the Paladins Premier League, they don't play every week. So we're not really going to be moving forward with a video for the Paladins Premier League <clears throat> necessarily, but we will try and work out something where we will be doing more videos on the PPL itself. Uh, and we'll also be... Still doing the console corner videos as well. We also will be starting the Call of Duty power rankings for the National Amateur League. You can go ahead and follow them on Twitter at National AML. Um, but those may take some time. They're already two weeks into their season. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but let's talk about the power rankings because that's why you're here for the Paladins Console League. Yes, the PCL uh, power rankings. And a lot of people really wanted me to either make a video or actually they wanted me to like, you know, just write something on the website when we post those power rankings, giving some sort of explanation for why they are the way they are. And I decided to make a video instead because it's a lot simpler, even though it's a lot more work. Um, I think you guys enjoy videos. Uh, so here we go. All right, so let's start off with number 16. And that would be heating up. After they started 0-2 in phase two, the entire roster hit the exit button pretty much. Uh, week three was a new start with an entirely new lineup, which included players who have never competed at this level. Now, thankfully, they were facing another squad in Shremix that also never competed in the PCL before. With two weeks more of experience in the league, Shremix was able to take the victory in a narrow and painful 3-2. to two. Heating up then failed to show up to play week four versus Hydra Gaming. We don't really know why. You know, if they tried to make roster changes, I heard. I guess they needed a substitute on Twitter is what their captain Dayton was saying. Uh, so they did not play, and Hydra Gaming got that free W. Now a terrible week three showing, a no-show in week four, and an already unimpressive start to the season with much better players have left this team last in the power ranking. All right, so moving on to number 15 is Stremix. The team has made a few adjustments each week in its PCL debut. Week four, we saw Solaire in the lineup and, uh, still, as well as Eridos. Uh, cool Enzi has yet to return since his week two play with them. Power Mateus is now on support instead of the off tank, which was given to Clarita Bum Bum, who was listed as a support sub during the relegations period. This lineup doesn't work, and it hasn't been working. Uh, Eridos constantly plays as if it is ranked. He overextends, has terrible mechanics, uh, and he can pretty much only play Victor and Vivian and is oblivious to his surroundings from what it seems like to me. Uh, taking a single point from Onslaught is disappointing, especially since they were able to take a map from them earlier in the first meeting between these teams. Uh, this team is a fourth place worthy team. Luckily, heating up is securing that spot in their division right now. Moving to number 14, now we have another team with tons of problems, and that's Aerial Rise. Uh, reports are coming in that Sir Benji and Unlimited Fails have both left the team following the week four loss to Aaron Manor. That would make things even worse than what they were. Alex Kidd can only play Makoa at this point, from what it seems. Benji had to play most of the other front lines, and it made drafting very difficult for them. Uh, Anara is a champion that continuously gets ignored since neither can play it, but they did draft it twice in week four. That's the same amount of times they drafted it in the first three weeks of this current phase. Decon is a plus for the team if he decides to stay and bring in Misto back to support for Vcon to slide to frontline could be a wise choice, but we don't really necessarily see that happening. We also, I also don't think that Misto was that great of a player that you would want him in the lineup. I think Vcon is the better choice at support. He's also the better choice at frontline in this current standing. Um, 
And if not, then the team's in a land of trouble moving forward. Another suggestion could be, you know, you go out and get a player like Centurio. He has left the game, but he may be interested in playing. Uh, at number 13, we have Effect. This one's pretty short. This team's going to keep dropping in the power rankings if I had to take a guess into the future. Uh, week four was the second week in a row they failed to show up, and reports are coming in that, that three of the main roster spots have left the team after starting off 0-2. Uh, I've been told that Smutney's left. That's a huge blow. Uh, he's a veteran player, has been around the scene for a while, has LAN experience on both PC and console, went to MSI. He's played with the Cyclone team, so he has that experience as well. Um, and one of the other ones that I've heard has left is Sibs. I know he's got a lot going on with school or uni. But at the same time, the past month, past two months, he's been talking about improving and and getting back into the game. And, and he's had a positive outlook, but still getting reports that he is still toxic and he still doesn't have that positive outlook. Um, but Effect is not only in trouble due to roster problems and no-shows on game day. That They also have been placed in the toughest division for Phase 2 with the other three teams all fighting for that playoff spot with Bust Down, Cyclone, and now Vroom Vroom. So you know, even if they do get a roster going, they're 0-4 at this point. It'll be a little rough for them. Um, not necessarily going to make the playoffs. Uh, I think that's a given at this point for them. I think the best thing... Best course of action is for Lexi to find a squad, get out there, get some games in. And that's if Lexi is still on the team. At number 12, we have Stush Gaming. Now, Stush was the team that everyone, I think, had high hopes for coming into Phase 2, despite finishing 1-11 in Phase 1. They were the only ones to take maps from Flashpoint and stuck with the same roster the entire time. Uh, give or take one week where they had to make a substitution. Someone was on vacation. I believe it was Nico. They subbed in, I think, Riser at that time. Uh, well, phase two thus far has been more than a disappointment. Facing Flashpoint this week again was looking good or was looking to be good since game one had decent team fights, but between the two of them. However, after losing game one on Jag Falls, everything seemed to keep going downhill from there. Even taking three points off of Flashpoint in game two wasn't as impressive. In my opinion, it only happened due to it being on ice mines, and Flashpoint hates ice mines from what I've known in the past. Uh, this team needs to make a substitution because Tariq on frontline isn't the one that they needed. I think that the rain, the rain and Tariq are pretty much evenly matched right now on that frontline position. I know Tariq is the better player mechanically. Uh, he's coming from support. He's a longtime support player, now playing main tank. And then you have the Rain, who was a longtime blaster player, now playing frontline. So I think that they really need to go out there and find someone to play frontline. I also think that maybe an upgrade to the DPS position could also work in their favor. They played two weeks with Tazlan, didn't really show you know, a lot of improvement from BYC. Uh, BYC, or Chico rather, comes back into the lineup, and he's doing what he was doing in phase one, where, you know, he's consistent, he's not consistent, he, he goes back and forth. I think they really need to upgrade uh, either at that position or maybe in the hit scan position with Nico. Who knows? Uh, so at number 11, we have Wasted Potential. Now, WP is doing okay-ish. They're losing, of course, but they're not just laying down and taking it, nor are they playing like a fourth place team normally would. Uh, even with a few roster changes, they continue to show promise. Uh, with players like Pow and Band Made. I'd compare them to the Stush Gaming we watched in Phase 1. Losing, showing promise, taking points, and maps from better teams, all while showing they know how to play the game properly. Uh, losing the Cats in Week 4 to their new experimental lineup is a blow, but I feel they can pick it up late into the phase, maybe get a third place spot, maybe even second if they're able to make a huge jump and get some wins off of East Storm and Cats on Mars throughout the rest of the Phase. Speaking of Cats on Mars, they slide in at number 10. Losing G-Pan hurt them. Losing Cool Matt was a big blow. Losing Regan will hurt them. And losing Taco Bell Waifu is a big blow. Uh, cool Matt was one of the better DPS players in Phase 1 league-wide, uh, even with Cats taking the wins over the third and fourth place teams only and getting stomped by Elevate. Uh, 
Um, Cats on Mars has a new lineup. They're experimenting with some things. Pickles is now playing the frontline position because Taco Bell Waifu left. He was up in the top five for rookie of the year. He was up for top five front lines of the year. Uh, Taco Bell Waifu leaving, or Sam, as you may call him, that was a huge blow, and it will be throughout the rest of the season. He was pretty much the only pillar left on this team after Cool Matt and G-Pan left. Now, Pickles is still there. He's still a veteran player. Uh, so is Clever Pup. He's still a decent player. Not so much a veteran, but they don't really have that carry potential as you know Sam or Cool Matt and possibly even G-Pan had at that point. At number nine is Vroom Frum. 2-0 start with a win over Cyclone, even with Slapadopoulos in that lineup. That was very impressive. Uh, some may say it wasn't as impressive because Cyclone was struggling. They were having roster issues. Uh, they were experimenting with some things, I guess. Uh, and they also went five games with Vroom. Um, but it was still impressive to me that this team, new to the PCL, in this situation now, those players have been on what was the biggest stage in PCS at some point in time, but now they're on the biggest stage in console Paladins in the regular season. The biggest stage would be the playoffs, of course, but this is the biggest regular season stage being in the league overall. So they were able to beat that team. They beat Effect in week one as well. Uh, however, they have not been improving, or excuse me, then a major three game choke fest to bust down. And, they were up 3-1 to one each game and end up losing. That was a huge blow, and that was a big, big part of why they dropped so hard in the power rankings because they were up 3-1 every single game against a team that really struggled against Cyclone where you just beat Cyclone. Um, Bust Down had changed their lineup a bunch of times. Now they were coming in with Pear Doggo, Ari Avin, uh, and Emmerfish. Emmerfish hasn't been as consistent throughout Phase 1. Also, he hasn't played the entirety of phase one, uh, you have all of them being North America. So they're coming on to that ping uh, discussion or that ping comes into discussion there um, because they're playing on the EU servers. You also have Pear Doggo, who is not as consistent. I guess he gets pretty nervous, I would say. He is pretty new to this competitive scene overall at this level. Uh, and you also have Ari Avin, who's not as consistent with just waking up and showing up on game day. Uh, for what his past has shown. Uh, but something happened with Vroom Vroom, and this squad needs to figure it out quickly um, because in the rematch versus Cyclone, they got destroyed 3-0, um, and they need to figure this problem out quickly if they want to regain their first place spot, which they held in week two. At number eight, we have East Storm Gaming. Now, this is not a complete team just yet, as they have some issues, of course, that they still need to work out. However, they have been improving little by little each week, and a lot of that goes because they have their coach and they have solidified their, or they have found a, a handful of players that they wish to use on a regular basis. Um, they're already light years better than they were in Phase 1. I mean, if Phase 1 East Storm went up against Phase 2 East Storm, it would probably look horrendous for Phase 1 East, um, which a lot of their games did overall. A solid lineup seems to be solidified now that Brockus is uh, has slid into the lineup overstruck user at that flex one off tank position. Uh, gaining V8 pots back was pretty large. It seemed to work out pretty largely for them in their favor. Uh, but losing to Elevate isn't that big of a blow considering the history and talent on the Elevate squad. Um, and no one really expects East Storm, let alone anybody in this division, to take a set away from Elevate. Um, so they're shooting for second place, and right now they're looking like a second place team in the Xbox North American division. Uh, up next at number seven will be Hydra Gaming. Hydra got the free win versus Heating Up in week four since it was a no-show on game day for the Heating Up side. However, the week before was painful with them losing to Onslaught in a bloodbath. It was 4-0, three straight games, super quick games as well. Um, and even Emoji back cap to finish the split stone quarry game had to have been painful and uh, a big morale uh, blow, I guess. Keeping them in the top seven is the fact that they have a good team still, in my opinion. Only really need to worry about beating Onslaught in their division, of course, because of Stremix and heating up not being at all a competition to these two teams. Um, 
According to sources, they have went out and picked up Jeff the Raccoon, although that gets weird in the breakdown to, to his role swap. I guess he'll be playing off tank and business will move to main tank and Izzy will get taken to sub. Um, so, the you know, in the console corner episode, we'll kind of break down this this change a little bit more. I don't think that Izzy should have been taken out of the lineup. I think he's a better main tank than business. I think that uh, Jeff hasn't played frontline in a super long time. It was actually way before spring land of 2018. I think he's still a good player mechanically. I think that, uh, so to, to put it the easiest way, I think that Jeff is a better player overall than Izzy, but I think that Izzy's the better main tank uh, choice at this point in time. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, at number six is Aaron Manor. Now, Ernest has done a great job of rebuilding his squad. Um, if I had to say it out loud. Grabbing iTeek was a gamble based off, off of him being my biggest flop of the 2018 PCL, and he hasn't played since then. But that's not the iTeek that they got, and nor is it the one we've been seeing so far. Instead, he's playing like the PCS version of iTeek and has become a great addition to this Aaron Manor squad. Beating Ariel Arise was to be expected in week four. Being taken to game five was not. But that needed to happen, however, considering they were the ones down 2-1 to one early on. Um, adding barcode was another good choice skill-wise, but Ernest has his hands full with keeping him in check on social media. I think that Nick has a lot of improvement to do as well as everyone on the team. So Aaron Man are looking really good right now. I think they could take games and sets off of a lot of the teams in the PCL right now. Um, and they look like a second-place team behind Flashpoint, if you had to ask me. At number five, we have Cyclone. Losing Harvey way back in phase one during the uh, initial MSI announcement still has a trickle-down effect to this day for this team. I still believe Fanatics is a good player, uh, but in my opinion, he wouldn't be in the starting rotation if Harvey stayed on the team. Uh, all that changes now since smutney has gone. Fanatics has to be in that lineup. And with Slop leaving as well, it gets even worse for them. Although in week two, he did play uh, with them, but he didn't play so well. At all. Uh, that was the week that they lost to Vroom Vroom. Our roster locks have hurt this squad by picking up Luke is too good for support. Seems both logical and smart. It allows for Kings to move back to his original role. He did so well on last season and at the start of this season, uh, which is the DPS role. I think he plays it super well and it fits him better than the support role does. It is logical since the free agent pool is very limited. Uh, and Cyclone is a potential playoff candidate in this division. Uh, it's getting down to nitty and gritty so far. They get they get beat by Vroom Vroom. They beat Vroom Vroom. They beat Bust Down. Bust Down could beat them coming up. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see how that goes. That'll pretty much determine how this goes uh, in the Xbox EU division. But Luke is too good. Has played with some of these guys before. He went to I believe it was the Spring Land of 2018 with the X Squad or. Or it could have been the Summerland. I can't really remember off the top of my head. Um, he didn't play, but he was there. He gained that experience. He knows uh, some of these guys pretty well now. So that's a big up for them. Uh, moving on to number four now, we have Bust Down. Uh, Bust Down got a free win due to a no show from Effect in week four. However, Bust Down is playing the best Paladins they have ever played as of today. They beat Vroom from 3 0 after being down each game 3 to 1. Uh, that was also a Vroom Vroom coming off of a win versus Cyclone and was in first place at the time. Losing week one to Cyclone did hurt Bust Down, but they took a map and it seemed like the same Bust Down from phase one when they faced Cyclone. Those four games, Cyclone wins. Uh, the second meeting between these two teams will really be the one to set the tone in, the, in this division and determine if Bust Down really does deserve to be above Cyclone in the power rankings and the standings. Uh, so that would be an interesting matchup. I think that Peridago is doing pretty well as well as Ariavan. I think that both of them really need to keep showing up, keep trying to improve, um, and, and become a nice DPS duo between the two of them. I think that Dreams is also improving. And she's kind of widening her champ, not just playing the Grover, not just playing the Genos, not just playing the Ceres anymore. I know Ping comes into that discussion, but... Um, if she's not able to lag and she's get some good internet connection games going, I really think that she could do a lot of good things for this squad. At number three, we have uh, Onslaught. Now, this team is tough to measure in the rankings for phase two. 
Uh, it's the same problem sort of with Elevate in phase one because the rest of the division just isn't up to par with them currently. Um, I thought Hydra would give them a fight, but that proved non-existent in their first matchup. Uh, so in phase one, we knew that Elevate was good at that time. Really good, actually. It's just that they had no one in their division to kind of test them or even push them to maybe second gear. Uh, and I think that that's the same thing here with Onslaught. Now, they did get a map taken off of them by Stramix and I believe uh, what was Nemesis in week one as well. Um, but now that that Nemesis squad is no longer, Onslaught's pretty much free reign here uh, to do whatever they want in this division. They 4-0 their next biggest competition in the division, three straight games. Uh, so it's not looking good for the other three teams in this division. Uh, but it's looking really good for Onslaught. Uh, but with Onslaught, it's really tough to tell when comparing cross-division because of that. Um, so for now, though, they sit among the top four, and that could very well change week by week. At number two, we have Flashpoint. Now, Flashpoint is still dominant, uh, even when they had to sub-Legacy out for Op because he was on vacation. Uh, they don't have a strong division, but it is in a weak division at the same time. Uh, fighting for second place seems to be the goal for every other team with Aerial Rise, Stush, and Urn Manor. Flashpoint is just waiting for the playoffs. If they get a map taken from them, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but currently, don't look like they are slowing down. Uh, with Skeppy currently in Europe, I think he is. The ping is no issue, and he seems to be loving it. Uh, he's playing all sorts of champions in his champ pool now with no problem and superb ease because of that. Prosper is still doing his normal thing as well. And Legacy is back on main tanks permanently. And most of all, Good Lad is playing the front lines again, most notably the off tanks. Um, and just so you guys know, the last time he did that in the regular season, they ended up winning a land. Plus, they keep banning the map. They lost to Stush on when against them. So I don't see Stush taking a split stone off of Flashpoint anytime. And then last but not least, at number one, we have Elevate. Uh, they continue to show they are the best right now in the PCL. Uh, Cats on Mars are no longer a team contesting them, in my opinion. They have really taken some blows with their roster. Uh, East Storm still isn't ready to take points off of them, as we saw in Week 4, and Wasted Potential have a ways to go before they can even beat Cats or East Storm. Uh, Elevate is just like Flashpoint at this point in time. Xbox NA got a little bit better compared to what it was in Phase 1. Uh, but still, Elevate is waiting until playoffs more than anything, and they're still looking like the better team. A lot of people thought that Exodia wouldn't be on the team in Phase 2 after his MSI uh, performance, but they've seemed to fix that problem, iron some things out, um, and Elevate's looking really good, especially with Pain on the IO. We saw that against E-Storm, so the Furia IO combo that they ran for two games, he changed talents too with the IO each game. I put out some good, some good examples of how how IO can be successful. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the first video of Power Rankings. But that is your Week Four Power Rankings for Phase Two of the Paladins Console League. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at Console Pro News, and don't forget all the links are in the subscription. And we'll catch you next time.